I'm Brandon. And I'm Brandon. And I'm Comron. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Danny. We, and together, we, this. We, we, we didn't organize that right before this. Together, uh, I mean, if you listen to this channel, you know who they are. Yeah. You know those voices. Yeah, frequent, we're, us. we're frequent guests. We're back again, whether you wanted us or not. Welcome back to Apollo City Comics. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is post Snyder cut that we're. Uh, oh my God! It's like a new era. It is. Yeah. Like, not all only, this weight lifted off my shoulders. Not only are we all just like exhausted because I I saw that movie one and a half times. Cameron saw it twice. Danny and Brandon, they're, we're lucky we saw they saw him once, and we just had a, like a four hour talk about it. <laughs> you yeah, make it seem like we didn't even make an episode. You can, we just you sat can, down you and can listen it. to it uh, at uh, Sutra Science Talk where you can hear the Cut of Steel episode number six, or you can go to YouTube uh, to Third Planet in the Black Hole and listen to Danny's uh, on it. It'll be The difference is one will have video, one won't. Yes, you'll sure. be able to see the video version on my site, and the audio version will be on Comrade's site. It's insane how that was. Ba- we decided not to do a. Uh... A commentary episode on that because oh, we were like, you know what, you know that's going to be way too right long. Right now is not the time, and we basically ended up doing a whole commentary episode on it, like in the I long know. run. Uh, well, because of that, it is Saturday night for us, and we're not going to do a topical, you know, uncut commentary. We decided to do a little new segment for you guys tonight. Um, basically. We're just going to talk about some either overrated or underrated comic book creators. And we made a short little list right before the show. And we're going to shuffle that list a little bit. And we're going to talk about four people and kind of duke it out a little bit to see some pros and cons of these creators. First up, ladies and gentlemen. You ready for us to randomize the list? Randomize oh, it. Let's do it. Are you, guys, are you guys watching the screen? Yes. We're watching the screen. Watching this. Here we go. Yeah. Let's do it. You like how it says I randomized this 15 times already? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not surprised. All right, here we go. Let's go. We're kicking it off. Oh, with Kevin, Kevin Smith. Smith. We have a lot of J's here. I just realized. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Lee, Jeff Love. And then the Jack gr- Kirby. The Jack Kirby. So we chose four names and we're just gonna we just randomized the order. We all basically oh. chose a name, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, let's uh, let's go down this list. Uh so who chose Kevin Smith? I did. All right, so Brandon went with Kevin Smith, and what's your argument? That he is an overrated comic book writer. Ooh, are we going to go through the whole list, or as they come along? Um, You know, we're going to decide as a committee, so let's just run through the list, and then we'll have the discussion, and we'll all duke it out to see. All right, Kevin Smith, I have a Wikipedia article open right here, ready for him to go. Uh, I only do that just because we want to, you know, maybe reference something, you know what I mean? Get the facts right. I did not know his kid's name was Harley Quinn Smith. You didn't uh, know that? <laughs> yeah. I did not know he that. Yeah. in jail for child abuse for that. Wow. <laughs> She's in a lot of his movies now. Anyway. Yeah. yeah they oh, just, my God. Wait, go back. Never. Go back up. Go back up, Brandon. <laughs> it's Danny. Oh, he was. <laughs> Brandon. Brandon, that was below the belt. My God, um, that man was... Oh my- <laughs> How is that me? That's not me. That's poor, Paul. Poor Kevin like Paul. Smith. <laughs> oh, poor sh- Kevin Smith. How does that look oh, like me man. on any planet? Why are we? Any, any, all right, all right, all right, all right. Well, Before we, anyway, we go, go oh, yeah. off the rails lay, here. Lay us down some facts, Brandon. Get, tell us about. Right, okay, good on him for losing look. all that weight, though. Congratulations. He, he, yeah, he uh, well, he, he had a heart, heart attack. attack. Yeah, and then he went vegan, and it kind of changed his life because of his daughter. Yeah, good for him. Um. Anyways, do you guys just want to do the quick uh, summary Wikipedia has on him? I honestly, he he's a creator of Clerks and Jane Silent Bob. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. Uh, he's Silent Rats. Bob. Uh, uh, his rights and directs the films. I mean, really I, can, big. I, I probably know the most about him, so I'll just... Oh, uh, yeah. I think, I, think I know facts. the least about him, so... This, I'm so, yeah, much. Kevin Smith is a filmmaker. He has written and directed many films uh, that you'd call his view skew universe. He's also done other, like, films that he hasn't written, but he directed, and there's, like, shitty ones like Cop Out, so we already know, like, how that went. But he also has jumped into comic books. He's done runs on Green Arrow as well as Batman. His more recent stuff has been like Green Hornet and uh, like Batman 66 <laughs> God, he did that. Green Hornet stuff. Oh, uh, <laughs> he may, I saw I, that in theaters. I, I can't remember if he may or may not have done Daredevil. 
Uh, yeah, he did. Yeah, uh, he, did. he did. He did the okay. comic book version. Yeah, I'm of talking Daredevil. about the comic books. He didn't do the Green Hornet movie. That, that yeah, wasn't him. Uh, Guardian Devil. Yeah, so he did all those. And then he's also created, honestly, a full-on podcast network called Smodcast. So he's really big on podcasting. Honestly, like for me personally, he was one of the uh, influences to get me into podcasting too because he created a whole I, network out of it too. So Yeah, and the other thing with Kevin Smith, and this is the thing, I, I love all his movies. Um, I'm pretty sure most of us here do. I think like Jay and Silent Bob is probably one of the most quoted films you can make. Oh, yeah. Uh, I like Clerks. And then for me, oh yeah, Clerks 1 and 2. The thing is Lawrence. with Kevin Smith is just like, that dude is living the dream. He's like, you know what? I'm going to make my own movies and I'm just going to have my homies there and just make it with them. Yeah. yeah. And he dabbles like, in every single comic book universe out there. He hangs out with everyone. He has, he, he literally has like the dream. Like he does anything that everything we love, he is associated with. He's not and bound. He he's not bound by anybody. And he's a very, yeah. he's a very positive person. He never really talks yeah. trash about people. He's always in a very positive attitude about everyone and everything. Yeah, he's a very humbled person, and I think, you know, it's very respectable for what he does, you know. But <laughs> we are here yeah. to critique his comic book writing. Right, Brandon? That was your choice. Yes. Wait, do Can we think do... he's overrated or underrated, or who's going to... We'll save that for the end. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of save that. We'll get everyone's opinion. Can okay. you make the screen a little bit larger, Brandon? Like, zoom in on the comic uh, Yeah, screen? let me see if I could... I think it's a uh, control... Plus... Can I can I say this about him? There we go. Uh, before Brandon goes off, is that a uh, you know I've list, I that... I haven't seen a whole lot of his movies or or, or or read a lot of his stuff, but I've listened to like his interview on like the Joe Rogan podcast and everything and, and a lot of his stuff, and he has such a a deep understanding of geek culture and nerd culture, and he has such a love for comic books and everything that I really do want to see him kind of helm a big budget superhero movie. Oh, I, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean, really, I, yeah. I'd love the, the if, guy. If anything, DC hire him at this point. What have you got to lose? <laughs> yeah, see what yeah, he, I mean, see what he'd yeah. lay out for the yeah. DC universe. I, I mean, Kevin Smith was kind of the guy. Um, you know, Brandon showed me that Daredevil documentary, which I watched, by the way. Oh yeah, um, yeah that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was the guy in comics who was the big movie star director. Kind of, you know, like they talk about how. He was worried about being, you know, for the comic community, the big movie star director. And then for the movie community, like this guy that's like, I'm gonna go do comics now, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting how his career is gone, in my opinion. And considering like he was kind of the odd one out, I feel like like he was the guy that was genuinely like a comic book nerd. Yeah, genuinely, you know, like, like straight up nerd, like in every sense possible. And I think. Well, like what you guys were just saying, like I've I was a big fan of his films, um, just because they were original and they were his. He just got up and did them, and then his podcast network. That's a big inspiration on me because when Fatman, uh, when Batman was it Fat, it was Fatman on Batman when it started. Fatman on Batman. It was yeah. so many interviews, and they were so interesting for just hours and hours and hours of these great comic book creators. Um, and that's how I learned about Grant Morrison. That's how I learned about Scott Snyder and a lot of these guys. And it just got me so entwined that I really wanted to dive into his books, you know? Um, I used to grow up watching Jane and Silent Bob like on HBO when I was like in middle school. Like it just corrupts you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, I had that DVD on repeat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Such a good time. So yeah. we, we look at, have you guys read a lot of Kevin's comics? Uh, I've read some of Guardian Devil um i remember in early college Comron came up to me and he's like what the hell kevin smith why'd you ruin batman <laughs> or something oh like my that. god do you remember which comic it was Comron? That was wait wait, wait. I, I said that to you yeah you told me that you're like damn it kevin smith you're angry about his batman stuff and it has to be the widening gyre. widening gyre that's yeah, what widening. it was yeah, yeah that one, that's I the was, one huh i was so just yeah let's yeah you know yeah. what? That's I, I've read both Cacophony and The Widening Gyre, and I think I remember The Widening Gyre a bit more. This is the one where P Poison Ivy captures Batman for a moment, and Batman's tied up, and all of a sudden he's just like, I'm getting so hazy. And all, she, like, <laughs> creates a <laughs> marijuana out of her spores, and she gets Batman all stoned. Right? Is this the I, one? I love that it. Could be. I, I'm gonna read that, that now. or in Cacophony, because Cacophony's uh like Winding Gyre is a sequel to Cacophony, which is like a three issue run he did, and then Gyre is six, and he was supposed to do a second book and it never happened, and it's still been on hiatus technically. Mm -hmm. But uh if I remember correctly, Cacophony 
is the one where it has the Joker. And in it, like, it's the whole story of Gordon, like, telling, like, Bruce could have killed Joker and he doesn't. And you even have Gordon basically being like, why didn't you kill him? You could have killed him. You could have ended it for all of us and we wouldn't have to deal with this anymore. And it felt very out of place for, like, Gordon and everything else, especially after, like, killing Joker. But yeah. uh, Winding Gyre makes it so the villain in that one is Onomatopoeia. And he kind of, like, disguises himself as a new hero that Bruce is okay with taking over as, like, the hero of Gotham while he uh, pursues a relationship with Silver St. Cloud. And then, like, it ends with Onomatopoeia being like, hey, I've been this hero this whole time, and I am I know you're Bruce Wayne, and I just killed you the love of your life. Or, yeah. like, slit her, slit her the throat. The last page is just him slitting her throat, and you're just like, oh, what a cliffhanger. And he's just never finished it. Yeah, because he, he goes after Joker at one point, and Joker's just like, oh, hey, you broke me out of jail. I know how to repay you. And he, like, pulls up his, like, uh, his patient uniform or whatever, like, hey, you can you can butt fuck me right now if you want to. Yes. What? Yes. Yeah. What? Yeah. Dude, all of that. Like, he does some bizarre stuff. Like, even there's a whole Aquaman thing, right? Like, he's just kind of there. The, the Aquaman stuff isn't really bad. It's just present. Uh, Catwoman at one point is like, hey, let's go do stuff. And he's like, sorry, I have like this woman I'm seeing now. And she's like, I didn't wear any panties. And she's like, no. And he leaves. Uh, there's also. He tells the hero that's Onomatopoeia uh, that explosion from the year one comic. He's yeah. like, yeah, I, I pissed myself uh, what? during that explosion. It's like all this weird stuff that you're just kind of like. Uh, when Kevin Smith talks about making like a grounded character, it's like he's making Batman as if he was Batman practically. Like he's getting stoned. He's pissing himself in fear. Like everything. That's just the vibe I get off of it. Yeah, it's it, it's honestly it it, it he it just re- it but felt really weird. Can his Batman, Batman get raped in a shower? What what what? This is a reference to what Zack Snyder said about his Batman. He was just like, my Batman is realistic. He can get raped in the shower. That yeah, he did say that in an interview. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> I mean, all I'm I'm just saying that was in an interview. That's all. Yeah. Are we so, all right? Did he do another book? Bellicosity? Did he actually come out with that? Uh, let's no, see. It never this, came uh, out. So this, uh, let me see. Uh, okay, so for Batman, he did Cacophony and the Widening Gyre. And then Batman Gyre? Six, uh, yeah, Widening Gyre. And then Batman 66. And then Batman. This uh, is actually pretty good. Yeah. I think that Batman 66 comic series was awesome. He did, the, it, he did the 66 comic series? Yeah, no, no, one he of just them. did, oh, one he of did the crossover and he got Ty Templeton, who is the artist from the animated series companion books. Oh, yeah, okay. exactly. And doing yeah, the they're really good. Adventure continues. Yeah, because those 66 comics, like like you guys said, but those were a lot of fun. I read a couple mm-hmm. of the comics when they got released. I, I've heard good stuff about his crossover there. And also I've read, it's been a long time, but I read the 10 issue run he had on Green Arrow when they restarted the line. The, the, it was a new volume of Green Arrow in like 2001, uh, Quiver. I've always wanted to read it. I'm also, caveat here, like, you know, I'm a big, we're big Batman people, so I know a lot more about Batman than I do about Green Arrow's past and his comics, but the Green Arrow run, I liked, but that's also coming in with not as much knowledge on him at the same time, and it's, like, supposed to be where Oliver died, and it's, like, he's been alive this whole time, and it's him coming Um, back from the dead. Oh, wow. The book is actually generally well-received for Green Arrow. Yeah. I've Um, always wanted to check that one out. It's always been on my list. You could probably find it. I mean, it says there's a collected version here. Yeah. Um, I've only read like uh, parts of the first issue of Guardian Devil because I was watching an interview with Kevin Smith about Daredevil uh, separate to that documentary. And they were talking about how he made it way too wordy. And he wrote it like a movie script. And they were like, Kevin Smith, calm down. <laughs> Dude, I, I just finished. I've been on a Daredevil like binge this year. Daredevil yeah. and Spawn has just been like my thing this year. And so I did all the Miller stuff and then I moved on to Kevin Smith's because I was like the next like big run that everyone talks about. Um, jumped into it and after the first three pages I was like this is, I'm drained. This is like way too much useless information. It is just a bunch of writing. If you think Scott Snyder goes on a rant but at least his has like a story and it has an essence to it and there's a oh, purpose. Wow. But this just rants, dude. Like, yeah, I saw pictures of it. It's literal, like paragraphs on the page. 
But and like what? honestly, Joe Casada's like art isn't the greatest in this one. Like his images of Daredevil are good, but everything else, like I'm not a fan of. You know, like, not to go off on a tangent art. or anything, but do, do you guys like Joe Casada's art? I, not, I don't think I do. I never, I, don't really, I never liked his art. I'm not too fond of him as a person. I think honestly, um, he seems he's very much so that he's just kind of doing whatever he wants with these characters and not what yeah, he think is I, I, best. Yeah, I don't know yeah. everything about him, but the interviews I've seen, I'm like, he seems a little full of himself. Yeah, and like uh, Kevin Smith on the Daredevil run, he he essentially what what year did he come out? Two thousand three. I want to say. It says it right here. Uh, no, it says 1998. Oh, okay, dude. 98, 98, 99. Okay, Miller finished Daredevil in the ninety. I mean the eighties, right? Yeah, because he did, he went and did uh, Dark Knight Returns after. So literally, this run. Is like a di- practically a direct sequel to Frank Miller stuff. It's as if he ignored everything wow. that's happened since Miller and just wrote a sequel to the- it. Has Bullseye in it, and it talks about the Kingpin. It has Karen Page, and that's it's- a huge problem in comics in general. That, that yeah. sounds like uh, post Mark Wade when who they who did who did they put on after Mark Wade? Like Charles uh, Soule. The Charles Soule. Yeah, oh, wow. they did the same thing there, where it was just kind of like the the first arc was me. It, it's like it kind of at there's, least there. Sorry, what were you I read it. I, I read it all. I've read everything Daredevil since Mark Wade started. Um, Charles Soul Run is decent because he created uh, Blind Spot. I think uh, his sidekick friend, which was a cool take on Daredevil having a sidekick, and he created uh, what's that one character's name? <sighs> Damn it, he was uh, Vincent Van Gogh. Um, Muse. Mm-hmm. That was a mm-hmm. really good, like the dark arts or whatever kind of a uh, storyline. Like- I forget what it's called. Continuing from Mark Wade's stuff, doesn't it just kind of throw it all in the trash? Yeah, it kind of just says, "All right, that happened." Um, yeah, so yeah, they they seem to do that a lot with Daredevil, unfortunately. Yeah, but uh, yeah, back to Kevin Smith though. So I mean, looking at it, I guess looking at the positive, Green Arrow and the Batman sixty six stuff, because honestly, I think Kevin Smith is much more like with the Adam West stuff. He is much more of a, it seems like a strength for him than it would be like making his own Batman. And on the left it, side, you have Batman and Kaka- like Daredevil on the negative side there. Well, well, the thing is, Kevin Smith knows comedy and camp, right? I mean, look yeah. at his movie filmography. Yeah. Those movies are full of jokes and campiness. So it's safe to say that he's got a good grasp on that kind of stuff. So, and I mean, I mean, and his films are like a, a taste. You kind of have to understand what you're walking into, like when you watch Clerks or mall rats or stuff like that you know what i mean like i get why not a lot of people i mean a lot of people do like him because he's huge but i see why people like really do push against kevin smith a lot but at the same time like i don't know mall rats was such an amazing film for me as a kid because it was like the whole comic book thing you know and then the stan lee Mm -hmm. moment that all that's what connected with me and that's what brand was saying is that he is truly a nerd so he kind of comes at it with like almost that childish approach to these superheroes because that's kind of the way his writing is in general he has that like nerdy geeky little like 12 year old inside of us that just wants to make like goofy jokes it says that's why batman has these goofy things and that's why he probably pulled off a batman 66 comic and that's why when he tried to be serious with daredevil you're just like ah you're you're almost there you're just kind of like mimicking this and copying it to spit something out though like it didn't feel like true but Mm. I mean, out of I mean, and his Jay and Silent Bob comic books, uh, they're hilarious because it's just him being Jay and Silent Bob, and you have Mike Allred's artwork, which is dope. But overall, I I don't know. Uh, to me, he's definitely overrated when it comes to like quality of creating a comics for as much as he loves the medium. Yeah, I think people, you know, if you're reading a Kevin Smith written comic, you're probably gonna read it and not think much because you're a fan of Kevin Smith. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that kind of shields him from any criticism when I could see how it's overrated because his name on it will make sales. Yeah. I will will say, kind of, Brandon, back when flashing back to this, to when I ran at you with Winding Gyre being like, what did he do? Like, uh, looking at that time, I was so big into Kevin Smith at that time. Like, I'm pretty sure I was getting into his podcasts and I was loving his movies, of course. And then I read this comic because I'm like, you know, Kevin Smith just keeps doing everything right. And then I read it and I'm like, he he's mortal. He can bleed. <laughs> like, he <did> something <laughs> he's wrong. mortal. 
So oh, yeah, man. that was that. It was like that moment. So that also, at least specifically with comic books, uh, overrated. Have you read uh, much or any of his stuff, Danny? Uh, no. So I, I might actually. I know this is kind of cheating, but I, I think I might sit this one out because I, I don't have enough of his. I haven't read enough of his content or watched enough of his movies or anything. I've just listened to interviews to really say if he's overrated or underrated. So if that if that's fair. That is fair, totally. But I think we all yeah. voted he's pretty overrated at that point. So yeah. okay. that'll be the reigning thing. Also, okay, at the I, I sent I watched that Daredevil documentary and I sent it to Brandon because I wanted him to see the way Kevin Smith acted. And literally like his attitude towards Joe Casada was so annoying like he's literally crying because after he finished um he got to bring bullseye back which bullseye was dead since frank miller's run yeah and um casada was gonna let him do like a bullseye miniseries i think and kevin took like five years and never gave him anything and after a while he's like i have this guy bendis over here that's been trying to use him um and i keep telling him no and i can't tell him no too much longer um are you gonna bring up something or and he's just like yeah yeah man i'm working i've been working on it like i'm telling you and then nothing happened and casada just let bendis do whatever and then kevin smith was just like you know man it just really hurt because i had his word and he said he was going to hold that character for me and all this and he's like and that he just kept on going back to that point and i was like all right kevin like you take that long the industry's moving like and, yeah. and this is the comic book industry that moved yeah. on without him that takes forever on anything yeah and so it's just like that's what really just and of course this was an older interview from the early 2000s he's you know, a thousand times different you could tell just physically is he's aged and you know all sorts of things he's grown a but lot probably matured a lot in his stuff i just feel bad for anyone who was like introduced to him at that point instead of like having like podcasts were the big things that you know introduced me to him actually mm -hmm. just and besides like you know knowing a little bit about clerks and jane silent bob but that's what kicked it all in and I've met him, I've interviewed him, I've all sorts of stuff. He's an amazing guy, but his comic book writing, I know he did Hit Girl recently, but I don't know, I I, I would expect more. I can see that. Yeah. I mean, he has, you know, once you have a taste for him, he does push out a certain, quite a certain quality to his content. Yeah. And you expect that across the board. Um. Well, moving on to number two. Oh, this boy. This is Brandon. Oh, this boy. is going to be a good one. Uh, uh, Jim Lee, underrated. All right, <laughs> <laughs> let me. I hope you know. I I know we joked about it. I know I sounded pretty serious about it. I don't hate Jim Lee. Yes, you do, <laughs> liar. <laughs> I don't. I don't hate Jim Lee as a person. I really don't. Now, as an artist and creator, I am like, what is going on, people? what is going on now outside of his commission work where you know he could actually try and produce something that's decent looking if not great his sequential comic art i can't do it man his covers for dc no and the way he drew yeah, drew drew like he's drawn goku which looked awful he's done some drawings of like other major characters his batman is stiff his superman for action comics cut co like covers are really stiff and bad so I think he's overrated. He's probably one of the most famous artists right now in the industry still, and I still think he's overrated. Well, the thing about Jim Lee and the thing that makes him, I want to say, good is that he was like studying to be like a doctor. His parents were forcing him into medical school, medical school, and he was right. He was about to be a doctor. Psychology, like, a doctor in psychology he was going to do. Oh, really? Yeah, I think he got a degree in psychology, and then they were pushing him to go on to do his like his his master's or his phd or whatever oh wow i didn't know it was psychology i just knew he was gonna yeah. be a doctor and, and like i no, i thought he was doing medical stuff like straight up medical no because i remember in an interview he said that it says it right here he went to princeton to study psychology yeah oh shoot oh and, uh, oh wait in, with the intention, intention of becoming a medical doctor oh, okay wow. so you're right. Both right right <laughs> okay that's, that's hilarious <laughs> he left it out of the interview then so <laughs> glad we established yeah. this okay <laughs> Uh, so about his comic books. <laughs> well, no, um, his anatomy is like really appealing to people, and that's why people love him so much. Is that he's he he knows how to get muscles, he knows how to get body types. Um, yeah. That that and it's because of that route. I feel. However, his it's like that too perfect. That's the thing about comic books and art. Like you don't want absolute perfection. 
You want like a little variety in it. You want their take. You want the artistic look of it. Yeah. I always felt that like Jim Lee's stuff is just like too on the nose at certain points where I'm just like, and it's not even like, you know, Alex Ross does it, but Alex Ross is like a different playing field in that sense, you know? He's like but, a Norman Rockwell type artist. Yeah, exactly. And it has like a flavor to it every single time. Yeah. Jim Lee just feels like, um, it's just me. real. It's just real and it's just no, bland. You know, it's stiff he, and it doesn't. It's just there. I I, I don't he, know. There's no movement in a lot of stuff. Here's the thing with Jim Lee. Um, and trust me, I've studied the crap out of this guy's art and read a lot of articles because if I say I don't like this, I'm gonna back it up. <laughs> and my thing with Jim Lee is one, his characters look way too stiff. Every time you look at a Jim Lee cover. His characters look like they're flexing every single muscle yeah. in their body, mm-hmm. and they look like they cannot move. Just look at the Action Comics 1000 cover. That thing is painful to look at. The second thing, is it called cross-hatching? The, yeah, cross-hatching, the or the, cross-hatching, feathering, rendering, oh, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Oh my yeah, gosh. horrible, dude. His, uh, his and Scott Bat- Williams doesn't help with that either. <laughs> no, his Batman <laughs> Catwoman cover for like issue 50 in the rain, I cannot stand that variant. Third... Uh, the thing with Jim Lee is he's too uh, cookie cutter DC art style. Yes. Now, when I say that, there's an art style DC specifically wants for their characters, unless stated otherwise, that every artist has to do. If you need examples, look at Ivan Reyes, uh, Tony Daniel, uh, what's it called? Uh, Jim Lee, of course, um, and a bunch Jason, of other artists Jason there. Jason Fabuck. Oh yeah, yeah Jason, Jason Fabok. Yeah, I think he, yeah. Jason, Jason Fabok is the biggest example of that. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Freaking, um, what's his name? Michael Jannon a little. Uh-huh. Even Just different, like even a uh, God. What's his name? The one who did he draws a great Superman, Gary Frank. Because I love Gary Frank's oh, early. Yeah, Gary Fr- yeah. His yeah, his Gary incredible Frank Hulk, his incredible Hulk work is great, but his DC yeah. stuff it's just like okay. And uh, basically, now put all those artists next to each other. And try to tell the difference if you're not the biggest. Like, maybe we would be able to tell the difference because we study them. But, like, put them next to each other for the average reader who oh. doesn't really pay attention to a lot of artists. Could you tell the difference? Gary Frank. Gary Frank's the only one I think I could see out of all of them. Maybe. Ivan Reyes is... Uh, his stuff is brighter. Oh, obviously. yeah. Ivan Reyes, but, too. Well, that's, that's the thing. Colorist. That, well, well, that's the thing. We can identify those little details. Like, yeah. I, like I know we and, all could. But, like, depending for, on the... Oh, my I'm sorry. I don't know. For a general one, like I, I can totally see your point on that. Like I can't yeah, tell the difference between Jason Fabok and Jason and Jim Lee half the time. And I then can, I can and, tell the difference with Tony Daniel at least too. I read a lot of Tony. And Daniel. then and then you also consider the colorist as well because whoever the colorist is, that can influence a whole lot. Or if they're coloring their own work, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's another thing. If they all had the same colorist, what would that look like? It would all look almost like a similar thing. If you have Scott now, Williams and uh, Alex Sinclair just coloring and inking all their stuff and just having a pencil and doing yeah, that the, comparison, that would be the interesting. Same, yeah, the same exact team of colorists doing that, you'd probably have a hard time differentiating them. That's all I'm saying. Now, I know Lee was at his peak when he did X-Men. Um, I'm not doubting that. I've seen some of his X Men. I've looked at cool it stuff. just to like really, you know, see. And I'm like, all right, I get it. And yeah. I, to me, I think that's when he was actually making an attempt. And once he achieved a certain rank at DC, he just doesn't care anymore. Yeah, and I, I've read his uh, Punisher World. I have some of his old Punisher War Journal comics, and uh, I like them. Oh, there I was think, flavor there. Yeah. yeah, they're good. They're really good. It's just you know, he. Uh, you know, like Brandon said, he just, I think he's become complacent in his art. He doesn't really need to, to try too much anymore. And I think, you know, the bronze, not the bronze, it's the modern age, I think had the best comic book art we've ever seen because it was that perfect balance of realism and comic book style. You know, those guys like George Perez, uh, you know, John Byrne, Arthur Adams, all those guys. I think they oh, were the yeah. best because they had that perfect balance to it. But yeah. Jim Lee, like he set such a standard that me as an artist feel like I'm never going to be able to get there. Cause it feels like when I go to conventions and I get critiques that they're all just looking for another Jim Lee. Dude, yes, I yeah. not it's agree like, you. It's a, it's a very just, weird standard that yeah. not a lot of people even want to yeah. be a standard. It's, there. it's like, like I'm closer to Jack Kirby or Ed McGinnis or Todd Knock. I'm more of a cartoony kind of guy. It's like I'm never gonna be Jim Lee. 
So yeah, if you asked me yeah. if like, oh, there's a guy, there's two artist styles. Do you want the artist style that's like Darwin Cook or do you want the artist style like Jim Lee? I'm probably gonna say the artist style like Darwin Cook. Yeah. Why? Because yeah. it oh, feels yeah. like a comic book. It's yeah. different. Yes. The thing is, I the thing is, it's totally fine that he has his style, and I think he does need to exist in the industry. I get that, you know. Yeah. I think he's contributed a whole lot. He's a freak. Can we cuss now, Brandon? Oh yeah. Yeah, he's a fucking image co-founder. I mean, <laughs> like. It's like, I get it. I know he's important. I know his style can be good. I know his yeah. style is important to a certain degree for the industry. But to think he's one of the greatest? Like, come on. It, Look at how much he reuses even... poses, too, on his cover. Yeah. I was going like, to say, his, any sketch cover you get from him, they're all exactly the same. It's all the same side shot. And that's why yeah. I don't get why you're paying $400 for a remark. He charges $400? And... So, for yeah. those? Yeah, I would say... Starting. Oh my! You know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't blame just because of the books. Also, he's been a part of though. I wouldn't blame someone for like if he was their favorite artist. Not mine, obviously. Obviously, but eh, I would say I, like- I. I don't understand that he would be an industry standard. That's what I don't get. Where it's like, oh, he's it's the standard, and you have to meet that. Yeah. But that's that's yeah. the difference there, though. It's like, you know, I, I don't blame someone if they're like, oh, he's my favorite. I'm like, oh, OK, I've read, I, I get the books you probably read that, like, got you there. But yeah, yeah, making him being like the one that everyone needs to be like, there's the issue. Yeah. And that's yeah, I, and- it's weird. It's funny that Danny said that. And I've had that thought in my head for years. And it's just driven me crazy. It's like, how do you you're putting the bar so high and it's and he is good. You know, that's that's it's really strong, you know, very good work. But it's like that there's more to it than that, you know, and because that's now become the standard, it's made like some of DC's books sometimes like feel a little bland. Like, yeah, yeah they all the blur people, together. And yeah, yeah, look at the people Donny Cates has recently brought into Marvel with uh, oh, some of the greatest Trad artists Moore I've seen and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, it's and, all DC hires now are these like almost photorealistic artists because like even, you know, I'll never, ever be a tenth as good as David Gibbons or Neil Adams. But at the same time, I'm just like, I feel like I can achieve something in that direction. Yeah. But, you know, artists like Jim Lee and, you know, there's, who was the guy who did the ultimates? Uh, that was uh, Mark Mill. No, that's Mark Mill. No, Mark- he was a writer. Yeah, he was a writer. Was it Brian Mark Silvestri? Mark Silvestri? How do you say his no, name? No, that wasn't, wasn't that, him. Um, Brian Hicks? Yes, or- Brian Hicks. Yeah, you're never going to get to that level. I don't ever feel like I'm ever going to get to that level because well, he's so... another one that's right along that line. Dude. Yeah. Which ultimate how, did, how, do you, how do you mix? Wait, how do you mix uh, Brian Hicks and uh, and uh, Mark Millar together? Oh, because they all well, worked they, on the same the series. Oh, wait, what's his name? What's his last name? Or no, I think, I think it's Brian Hitch or Hitch. It... Hitch. Yeah, Brian Hitch. Oh, Hitch. Hitch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, Brian Hitch, okay. Jim Lee, Jason Fabach, they're all cut from the same cloth. I'm just like, I'm never going to be able to get there. You know, and, and then now well, with the computers, thing, it's even worse. Yeah. Well, here's yeah. the thing, too. I was going to point this out. The reason why Jim Lee is becoming this industry standard for DC is because X-Men Volume 2, number one, is to this date, apparently, according to Wikipedia, is still the best-selling comic book of all time with sales of over 8.1 million copies that generated nearly $7 million in 1991. According to the public proclaimed by the Guinness World Records at 2010, that book still holds the highest sales, so of course he's going to be the industry standard. But we got to also remember they printed variants like crazy in the nineties. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was just like the whole and the whole image thing. This that was, was what kicks yeah. and everybody like, was just buying comics just because they thought they were going to be an investment. Gonna, the, every yeah. number one was like the yeah. biggest seller ever, and there's a million copies of each one out there. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I even had one of these books, the one with Magneto. Nice. So, um. The other thing, too, and this isn't really this is more of something that I'm not blaming Jim Lee for, but, you know, he was part of that group of people from Image that were like, you know what? Fuck you, Marvel. Fuck you, DC. The cool we're gonna kids. Go do our- yeah. They literally said to Marvel, we're quitting and walked out and marched over to DC just to go to their faces and say, we're not going to work for you either. Yeah. And then. Out of pettiness, right? Yeah. And then they go create Image. But then, like, here's my thing. I get it. If you're chasing the money, I get it. If you want to sell out go make your money, go make your life happen. You know what I mean? I'm not going to blame someone for that. If you want to go out and, you know, market what you do well in terms of art and you want to make money and sell out all the power to you. But Jim Lee went from like, fuck you guys. I'm going to go do my own thing to going, Oh shit. Do you see? Yeah. You could, you could have my property and you know, I'm gonna go work for you and everything. Not to be too mean, but do you kind of realize why? 
Like, look who stayed at Image. Mark Silvestri, uh, um, Todd McFarlane, and uh, even Rob Liefeld for a long time to a certain extent. Um, Home Slice that did Savage Dragon. Oh, Eric Larson? Eric Larson. SF based. Yeah. It, look at. I met Eric Larson. He's cool. Jim yeah. Lee was like, him. like creative. <laughs> He's a no, the terrible is, writer, and he not. brought down a yeah. lot of their books because he here's couldn't the write. Thing. Yeah, here's the thing. His Wildstorm stuff, it was nearly going bankrupt practically. Yeah, dude. He, and, oh, so he need, he was – everyone saw I, like mutual benefit there of like I, you you know, know, DC again, gets I, someone and he just gets saved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's why I don't blame him. I get it. You got to make money. You yeah. got to provide food and you got to provide got income. He's got a lot of kids too. So yeah, nine. Dude, thing- he has a white wife and nine kids. It's so crazy. He's like the shortest oh. little Asian guy in the world. Like, and it's <laughs> he so is funny, working man. overtime, man. He is, he's got nine he's kids. Got nine, nine. Kids, dude. Nine. God. Dude, he I, I knew he had like a few. Comics. His just- wife. <laughs> I, okay, I'm gonna say this too. His wife is very, very pretty. I will. Yeah. So oh, I've okay. seen her at oh, the with that house. Oh, that, yeah, that, like, that makes everything. They got weird. that big house, and I mean, of course he's gonna have nine kids if he's got. Well, anyways, oh, I'm just. Uh, what are you I'm saying about now. I'm. I'm saying I get it. You got to make your money, right? Yeah. But to uh, also, if we're gonna, you know, look at the other side of things, you were with your homies, and we're like, "Fuck you, all you big corporations. We're gonna, you know what I mean? We're gonna go yeah, out but- and we're gonna like." Do our own thing. And then he's like, oh, well, yeah, here you go, DC. Have my properties. And, you know, I'm going to work for you and all this stuff. The thing is, Image wasn't even his idea. They just ran into him by chance when they were walking out. And they said, hey, this is what we're doing. You want to join us? He was like, oh, okay. He was hesitant. He was very hesitant. He was freaked out about it. Like, I mean, and I will say this. One of the appeals I do have for Jim Lee, though, why I do still like like him over some other artists or whatever or just you know i enjoy watching his twitch or, and everything is that he does stick to that pencil and ink classic style that i think is you know more and more going away that's very true you're yeah, right because you well, notice he's pretty down to earth yeah and you see and he seems like a cool guy you know, he's real is, nice yeah, yeah again this is I, personal I, attack i never i never said it was personal with him yeah, I, yeah I brandon, why do you, why do you hate him so much why do you yeah hate brandon why do you person? hate his, why do you hate his face <laughs> tell him to, i want you to go to a convention tell him to his face why that he's overrated you, yes <laughs> good to meet you you're overrated Jimmy. <laughs> but you uh, know he's a nice guy in person i've met him more yeah like i said he seems like a chill guy Brandon goes up to his table and says you're overrated he's like okay that'll be 400 bucks and brandon's like oh okay <laughs> yeah, I know, right? him, make the mistake if i can get him to I'd, I'd still be like yo sign my batman hush like i'm not even making that I'm, I'll oh, still yeah, be yeah, yeah, no, I, do, you, do you get what i'm saying though like oh, he's like top of the industry yeah. and you know yeah. the, the selling out to the point where it was like you know you go from uh we're doing our own thing to like yeah okay dc you can have my characters and you know what why, why don't i go work for you guys and you know screw it i'm, I'm gonna go back and work for the major corporation because even though I said I wasn't, I'm gonna go do it anyways. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I understand completely. Like that's it's not it. very, it's not very punk rock, all right. They wanted to be the punk cash rock money of him, so technically. Yeah. And meanwhile, yeah. we're on what issue three seventeen of Spawn right now. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Spawn's still there. Todd still McFarlane. Better artist. Todd McFarlane was the only one out of that entire group who had a business mindset who was gonna go anywhere with it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He was right. And then. Uh, uh, he's still a better artist than Rob Liefeld. Just saying. Ah, oh, that's okay. not saying much. I'm a better. <laughs> ar- a... I'm a better artist than Rob Liefeld. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. But anyways, right. that's my argument why Jim Lee is overrated. So uh, I well, guess final consensus here, boys. Uh, overrated. Overrated. Yeah. Underrated. No, I'm just kidding. Overrated. <laughs> over- right. Overrated, right, but I still like some of his early. St- I still like a lot of his. Yeah, his early stuff, stuff is really dope. You gonna sell out to the man like he did? <laughs> uh, yes. Huh. So we're on to. The Sutro Jeff. Side Talk pick by Comrade. Oh, boy. Jeff, Jeff Loeb. Loeb. Jeff Loeb? Wait, he's Jeff Loeb the third. Oh, oh I didn't God. know that. What? What? There's, two? <laughs> There's three of them? <laughs> wait, wait, guys. Which comics did the other two make? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, uh, real quick. Wasn't Jeff Loeb... Uh, was, didn't he say some like dicey stuff that got him in trouble? Yeah, he don't yes. like Asian people. I honestly Towards don't know Daredevil. anything about it. I don't, I oh, it's right here. Either. Okay. Um, oh wait, was it the actor that played Nobu? Yeah, was oh, that what yeah. it was? I'm reading it right now. Yeah. Okay, following but- the controversy surrounding Iron Fist casting, Loeb defended the casting of white actor Finn Jones. Um, no, there was a whole thing where he said something while promoting about- the second season of Iron. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't really look into this when it happened. Okay, I'll say that. Like, I mean, 
Is it Iron Fist White? Yeah, like who yeah, cares white. about that? That's not. No, he said no, something I'm, to like I'm, some but... some cast members. Yeah. It, oh, it, it's it was, right here. Yeah, yeah, it was something else. Um, so the guy that was playing Nobu on the Daredevil show, um. Let's see. During the hashtag Save Daredevil Con panel for Comic Con at home in July 2020, Japanese Canadian actor Peter Shinkoda, who played recurring uh, played the reoccurring villain Nobu on Daredevil, suggested that Loeb force the show's writers to drop proposed storylines fleshing out Nobu and fellow reoccurring villain Madam the reoccurring villain Madam Gao. Shinkoda accused Loeb of explaining to writers that there were n- there. Uh, I mean, Oh, okay. Yeah. Hold on. This all... Dude, yeah, Dude. this got crazy. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. I was like, hold on. I, I got to make sure I read this before saying this. Three Marvel like... movies, a trilogy called Blade was made where Wesley Snipes killed 200 Asians each movie. Nobody gives a shit, so don't write about Nabu and Gao. Um, that's ba- quoting. That's Jeff quoting Loeb. Jeff yeah. Loeb. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, he was just saying, like, Asians don't matter, which is huge right now, actually, in the filming of this right now. Uh, so see. that's really tragic. Oh, wow. So it, it continues. Uh, like this whole thing, uh, Shinkoto also claimed that he and Gao's actress. I, I'm always like, I, I never want to butcher names. Wait, wait, Ching Ho. Like, it'd be Wai Ching Ho. Wai Ching Ho. I think. Okay. I, I believe so. Um, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Oh, yeah, we, we're, we're, um, yeah, we're not, yeah. <laughs> were not invited to the season two premiere of Daredevil and received less payment than extras. Oh Damn. my god! Co-star Tommy Walker said that Daredevil and Defender showrunner Doug Petrie had previously pitched a multi multiracial Asian American version of Iron Fist to Marvel Television in early development but was rejected by Loeb. Wow. I did not know about any of that. Oh, I knew I, I knew, I knew, I knew it was that. bad but I didn't know that I, there was I knew other he stuff too. I knew he said some stuff but oh my god. Wait, well, so when did 200 Asian people get killed by Wesley Snipes and Blade? <laughs> Why? Is that? Look I at Wesley Snipes' each picture movie. that you just. That, the, the honestly, picture, I'm not gonna lie. It looks that like he's like, "Why off. the hell are you dragging me into this?" <laughs> yeah. I'm like, "Wait, what?" Um, okay, so there's a lot to unpack here. Okay, um, well, let's, uh, <laughs> the picture of Wesley uh, Snipes comes up on the Wikipedia. Uh, okay, let's. Um, should we try to separate the art, the artist from the? Yeah, art? yes, yeah. yeah. Separate the uh, so, separate the work from the other stuff for sure. Okay, let's just yeah, all agree like, right here with everything going on. That was terrible. What he. What he said. Yeah, yeah. it seems like yes, Jeff yeah. Loeb is a pretty terrible person. Yeah, that's messed yeah, up. That's, um, uh, yeah, that's a so, so some of his acclaim about it. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, Jesus. Some of his notable works, um, and this is stuff we've probably all read for sure. Batman Hush, Batman the Long Halloween. Right, I read that. Oh, man, um, this is hard to... Oh, after reading that, dude, he and uh, Tim Sale have made some of my favorite superhero stories. Yeah, that's the hardest yeah. thing. thing. He, yeah. I love yeah. yeah. this stuff. God. Dude. All right, yeah, let's, uh, let's separate the art from the person. Um... um because that's a whole trilogy, right? It's the what's yeah, no, it it's a it's four books. It's a uh, Daredevil Yellow, Spider Man Blue, which is probably one of the oh, greatest Spider Man books. Batman Hulk stuff. Gray. Oh, the the Batman stuff. Yeah. That's um, it's three oh my books. It's, it's, I'm it's thinking right now. Halloween, Dark Victory, and uh, Haunted Night. Haunted Night. Yeah, Haunted, Haunted Night, Night is a bunch of like, short stories. Yeah, I'm thinking three right now. Ones, have you guys which, actually yeah. seen any Asian characters in his comic books? I, mean, I know that's all I can think of now. <laughs> I'm thinking of that. Oh, I'm just like, wow. oh my god, I can't think of one single Asian. Well, the, uh, there's not very many Asian people in comics anyway. I want to be is, honest. Um, I mean, yeah. I think there's just Italian people in his comic books. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because yeah. he did Catwoman when in Rome as well. Yeah. Yeah, they're all just kind of um, Italian. I mean, yeah. that's not really knocking Asians. That's just specifically Italian. Italian. I mean, that's not really proof. I would say at the same time. Well, I mean, okay, if, you, still if, if it's a book there. that's based in Italy, I expect there to be a bunch of Italian people in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? and so, like all the um, Halloween stuff is all mobster stuff. You don't really see yeah. anything besides um, Pines and all of his bad stuff, honestly. Well, okay, well, okay, well, God, that's that's a I'm whole other <laughs> conversation, <laughs> though. Like, oh man, maybe we should save that. Maybe we should have saved that for afterwards. Um, well, for his works. Uh, has everybody read a lot of his stuff? Yes, yes, yes. so much. Of okay, it, dude. so I've so read much. all his Batman stuff practically. Same. I've read uh, all the color series. Is that what they call it? Yeah, I've read most um, of them. I've read all four. I think the Captain America one is the weakest one. Um, uh, let's see, I've Dare- read dude, Daredevil Yellow is amazing. It amazing. is Daredevil Yellow is pretty crazy. I've read um, Long Halloween. I've read. The Superman, oh, and Superman and Batman Public Enemies is one four, of my favorite Superman and Batman yeah. stories. Uh, 
I've read some of For All Seasons. I've read some of his Ultimate stuff, which I hated. I've read Spider Man okay, Blue. So, so yeah, we all we're all. I'm gonna. I, I would honestly consider him and Tim Sale as like the most dynamic duo of comics for me. Probably on it. Oh man, like I can't get over this. This is like I did not know any of this about him. I also say, <laughs> you know, just uh, like it's like, more, like I read putting some more putting more into it uh, at a certain point. Just saying, his didn't his son pass away? Well, we'll get into yeah. that. We'll get into. Oh that. no, no, tell, we'll... t- let's talk about it real fast. Okay, well, um, yeah, that was his a whole son. Deal. Oh yeah, his son died in 2005 at the age of 17. After a three-year battle with bone cancer, in June 2006, Sam had a story published in Superman Batman number 26, it's a heart which was nearly almost. completed before his oh, his death. Oh, my God. Dude, that his issue father... is, it grabs you by the heart because of that. Yeah. Oh, man. His father. Oh, no. This is. He finished it for him. Oh, man. With the help of, like, everybody, basically, in the yeah. industry. And Joss yeah. Whedon. Held. Oh my god, that's right there. Just, so, how old is he now? Get Jeff that Loeb? picture of Joss Whedon out of here. But yeah, how old is he? <laughs> how old is Loeb now? Like, it doesn't how, say. Uh, What's the age? It doesn't say. Let's see, it says right here, he collected comic books. Let me just look up his age. It doesn't say yeah, it on his Wikipedia so at the top. I, I think that the fact that he lost his son really reflected in a lot of his work because it was pretty dark and like ultimate. He's 63. Yeah. Ultimatum was just a so dark, awful, so gory. Weird. Like that was one of the worst comics I've ever read. Honestly. I think, honest, I'm not defending anything about him. I'm just saying I think a lot of things about him changed probably after yeah, that moment. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he became um, way more cold. For the worst, yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there's a lot. Like I said, it's a long conversation. If you yeah. uh, were to go into it, we'd but have to do some research yeah. to really get a good idea. This is very spur of the moment. So. Wow. Yeah, um, yeah. For his work, though, as far as his written works, I think he fluctuates. Um, yeah. I would almost want to say as a writer, again, we're speaking specifically about his writing. He's almost not. He's like on the verge of being overrated. I was going more um, towards the underrated area. I don't think yeah, I'm, it's I'm brought also, up enough. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm aiming for underrated. Kind yeah, because, I mean, dude, Hush, so? yeah, yeah. Hush changed everything, and they really only give him credit for Hush. But, dude, like, Hush in the Long Halloween, that's all they really pay attention to. But, well, dude, so Batman. many other pieces are just, like, amazing. Public Enemies is a fantastic story. All the color books are phenomenal, and those aren't recognized enough. Um we hear about Frank Miller's Daredevil all the time, but we don't hear enough about Daredevil Yellow, which is, that's one of the first Daredevil books I've read. Same um, here. Yeah, Daredevil Yellow. And it's such a great concept because it's like, because uh, every like color represented like a sort of like emotion or something. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, it was the yellow represented like fear, but also like it tied into the suit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And each one does that. And it's what a phenomenal way to like think of a series. And like Comron said, like him and Tim Sale, they just go hand in hand. Oh, and, dude, I I agree when it comes to like the combo of the two of them. Oh, Tim Sale yeah. is kind of falling off. But like the to me, peak Batman. I know this this book gets tossed around a lot, but peak Batman is like one of one of the peak Batman books is Long Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. That's sure. honestly yeah. it's, it's argue it it's, might be my one of my two favorite books. It's the basis for the Dark Knight. So I mean, well, dude, even that and uh, what was it Dark Victory? I think the one with Robin in it. That yeah, whole scene with him. Dude, that like what really a cool introduces way. Robin. Like that's yeah. kind of like so the good. real. It's so good. I overall, I think I would say I. I don't think he's overrated or underrated. I think he's, you think he's pretty rated. Yeah, I think he's rated. Um, I think he'd lean towards a little overrated, almost personally. Really. Mm-hmm. I just feel uh, like we could pull more from his works, you know, but other yeah. than the two that he's done. His other works do so much for these characters as well. And he's not like really awarded enough with that. Well, yeah. I say that because he is recognized for a lot of works, but then like you read like Captain America White and you're kind of like, eh. You know, like I read that and I was just kind of like, I feel like there's a lot going on here that they're really grabbing at, but it didn't hit stick the landing for me. And honestly, um, I kind of enjoyed Ultimatum because I always took the Ultimate Universe as an over-the-top extreme thing, and that's exactly what it was. And I just felt like it was kind of like crazy, but he just did some insane stuff in that in a few issues. Dude, everyone that dies in that book just blew my mind, dude. Like, and I, yeah. I thought it was just an entertaining read. So. They're also shitty. Okay. They're also shitty people in that universe that you're just like, well, they probably all deserve yeah. it. Yeah. And See, who, who did the art? For Ultimatum? Yeah. Let's find out. 
Ultimatum um, with David Finch. David oh my Finch, god. Yeah. What, <laughs> okay, what? another DC artist that has that staple as well, like what we just talked oh, yeah. about. Yeah. Oh, you could see it, dude. Oh yeah. It, yeah. Oh, I need to read this book actually. It's now just, I think about it, I should, well, I should I need to read Ultimate it. in general. Don't we'll, read we'll, it. It's so ugly, and it's just no. So we're gonna unpleasant. do an episode on it. I wanted. To, I've always wanted to. We're gonna do. I'm gonna it. go on. I'm gonna go on eBay and get a copy. Maybe I'll see. Anyway, um, but but yeah, for Jeff Loeb, I wanna. I like. I wanna say. You know, if we're talking specifically about the writing, I kind of wanna lean towards he's almost overrated because. I I do love a lot of stories that have been produced between him and other artists, but I feel like, again, you gotta, you know, there's some misses. Like again, Captain America White. Um, I think I mean I'm I'm I guess I'm looking at everything post his son. Oh okay, He's yeah, just different. I guess that's true. I'm not gonna sit here and say he is overrated. I'm just not sure. I'm kind of like in the no, middle with Danny. Yeah, it's it's something I can't say whether I think he's just he's rated. He's had an up and down career. I think I'll I'll say underrated mainly for his earlier work, pretty much. Yeah. Whoops, I spelled that wrong. I'm getting so antsy after sitting on my ass for four hours to talk about a four hour movie <laughs> that I sat on my ass <laughs> to watch yesterday. <laughs> it's a uh, it's, it's a repeating thing. You know? Yeah. Um, so but, all right, so that's or we're gonna say Brandon. No, yeah, that that's the third one. So we have. So what's the verdict? What's the verdict? Is he underrated or? Uh, I think it's like uh, two, I'm gonna, two rated and two underrated, right? I'm gonna cheat and say I can't decide. Yeah, I'm gonna say rated. So, He's rated. All right, so I guess it's underrated. Then. I guess it's underrated. It's kind of right. yeah, it's kind of a draw almost though, but. Yeah, I mean it's in the middle. It's like for sure not yeah. underrated. Yeah. All right, here's the one that's gonna make everybody angry. Are you ready for this? this is mine. So Jack the King Kirby. Dun dun dun. So. I did not know Hella he died in overrated. California. Oh my god, so overrated, dude. Like, who is this guy? What does he even How, do? What has he even <laughs> done? What does he, <laughs> what do? he, he even do? Bro. Know. You don't even know, was, bro. We, uh, we didn't just talk about him a bunch. And okay, so, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out where Thousand Oaks is. Cause, that's LA. It's yeah, like Southern, Southern California. California. Oh, wow. So, okay. uh... Let me explain my 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 stance on Jack Kirby because I wanted to go over him both as a as a writer and an and an artist. So, um, I love his art. Um, one of the best compliments I've ever gotten saying was somebody said that some of my art is kind of Kirby esque, which I take that as a huge compliment. Oh, I, I bet, yeah, hell yeah, yeah, because I mean he's he kind of just broke the rules, you know. He did he didn't ever care like if. He didn't know he would make up muscles and everything when yeah, he draw yeah. characters and everything. But the thing that I want to bring up about his art, though, is just that, yeah, it's cool to look at. If it were anybody else drawing like him, though, especially today, it would not fly. You would get laughed no. out of the room if you drew like well, Jack Kirby and you weren't Jack Kirby. Because and it also it depends a lot on his inker too, who he had inking. Yeah, who his inker had a huge yeah. deal with it too. I, that was I think a big thing. Joe Sinnott really did the best, but you know you look at other ones where the they, they look deformed a lot of yeah, the characters, yeah. and you're just like that, like that that the cover that Brandon has up right now that would never fly today with how it looks. Everyone would be like, oh, yeah, well, you need to develop the muscles not, and everything. Not at DC, it would. <laughs> Oh. Uh, <laughs> here's the thing with Jack Kirby though and I, I've watched documentary I've watched documentaries about him where other artists you know writers and artists have, and like inkers and colorists have talked about him yeah. there's like a few things you gotta think about with Jack Kirby um, one being the amount of issues he would pump out yeah the man was a machine right he like was. he would do a full comic or like two full comics within like a day and a half what what sums you up know? jack kirby is that picture of him sitting at, at his uh, drafting table in his underwear yes. with a cigar hanging out of his mouth yes. just drawing yeah. and a cup of coffee next to him so, um, um you know i what a man i'm going to say it like i'm just going to call it right now and i will back it up with just one simple fact jack kirby is underrated and the reason that is, is that we know who he is by, because we're fans, because uh -huh. we're creators, um, and any fan or general, like big fan, that's the thing, a big fan in the industry is going to recognize him and all his contributions. Um, and creators, of course, will. Now, Stan Lee is a household name. Jack Kirby isn't a household name. Um, however, Jack Kirby should be on like every 
it, it, everyone should know who Jack Kirby is. <laughs> yeah, everyone yeah. should be able to identify him. Everyone, and, his family should have way more what they have and what they are left with. He is just underrated because he does not still to this day get the full credit that he deserves. And, and I ended a lot. I, I, but, I agree with you right there, Brandon. As as a writer and as a creator, he is very underrated. I only think that he's kind of overrated as an artist. And, it, you know, I think I come at this from I'm, – I'm not an artist. Like, I, yeah. I, I like to, like, doodle and draw every so while. But um, I, I've heard a lot of artists say the exact same thing you have. And I can I can definitely agree if I'm thinking with an artist's mindset. Um, as, like, a casual – like, as a writer and somebody on standby, to me, those machines that he creates, when you look at his late work in the Eternals, um, when you look at the fourth world stuff, it's just so – unique bizarre. and bizarre and just the way the machinery cool. is and i love his yeah, drawings of Orion. it's, it's amazing so, the lord of light stuff is some of my favorite things that he's ever done and that's that super colored stuff up here yeah I was Whoever, did, did he see. color his own work he did i think okay mm-hmm. yeah that's uh, he was a great colorist and uh you know what's funny is a lot of his character he does have a distinct art style that no one could really mimic yeah um yeah that's i've heard thing. yeah i've heard artists funny enough jim lee uh, talk about him in a documentary where he was like, you know, you you look at it the first time as, you know, whether when you're like a casual reader, you're like, OK, I get it. You know, it's not it's kind of blocky, you know, limbs look kind of weird. But then he and I could be quoting him wrong. But then he said, like, but when you look at him from an artist's perspective, you're like, oh, he did that because that's how a foot does twist or that's how a hand does move. And then everything starts to click when you approach it from that, where you're like, okay, I see why he drew it like that. This makes more sense now. You know what I mean? Right. And You know, that's the thing, too. Uh, And and I've heard similar stuff to that, where it's like, even when I first was introduced to Kirby, I was like, I don't see what the big deal is. This isn't that good at all. Like, in fact, I don't really like this art whatsoever. It took me a while to really look at it and be like, holy crap every single image moves like yeah i don't know anyone who has who can have every picture look like it's coming right at you and it's moving within the panel right and that just blows me away the only thing that i i think that you wouldn't be able to get away with if you weren't jack if you drew exactly like jack kirby but you're not jack kirby if that makes any sense is the anatomy but like the his machines his backgrounds everything is just perfect i love it i love the way he draws anatomy but you're not going to be able to get away. Like the picture that Brandon has up of had just had up of Captain America. You're not going to get away with that. And yeah. in comics these days, you know, and I think the only reason he got away with it is because he, he was like, well, what are you going to do? Fire me? You know, I'm the one yeah. who's making, I'm making your entire universe for you. Well, one man machine, you know, yeah. I mean? writing. Yeah. I mean, creating, he's the king for drawing. a reason. Yeah, yeah he, he is the king. Yeah. I think he holds like a crazy world record in his career. He produced like 150,000 pages of, art or something like that that's insane yeah i wouldn't be surprised because everything he did was just like the biggest thing ever like every single thing we see in the media today is one of his creations like i can't look in any i have dark side right there i have silver surfer right here i like turn this way there's the fourth world everything everything has his influence yeah Yeah. it's he shaped what we adore and love and yeah you know, even inside of like we just finished Snyder, that was on Dark Side and D Side and yeah, everything. Yeah, exactly. That was, that's all the Kirby. fourth world. All, like, yeah. the fourth world is Yeah, that I was explaining to my girlfriend like when we were watching, because like, you know, she wasn't she's like, Okay, I've heard about Dark Side, but I don't know who that is. And I was like, Yeah, you know, it's a Jack Kirby creation and she knows who Jack Kirby is because I, I don't shut shut up about comics, obviously. Yeah. I just keep, you know, talking and never know when to stop. But then I told her, I was like, one person created that. Yeah. Like fourth world is all one person. It's all Jack Kirby yeah. in, in its entirety, you know. So it's it's crazy. Um but I think I'm gonna say something that might kind of sum it up in a way, and I'm not trying to end it there, but I think he's overrated to a, or to a certain extent, maybe amongst the comic book community, but underrated from the casual viewer. Yeah, I could agree with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, yeah that's sure. my yeah. That's really my exact point um, with him because he's just. I, I I really feel like we see Stanley's face all over the place, and you oh know we'll have gosh. a conversation about him. But <laughs> yeah. you know, I I just feel like Jack just 
it's all about him. Everything we know and love about comics is all him. And like he said, comics will break your heart. And he was speaking the goddamn truth with that dude because he just does not get like the recognition that we that he just rightfully deserves. And you know, bouncing back to what uh Brand what you guys what Danny actually I think Danny was saying it, um, that no one can pull this off in today's world. Uh that's I, I don't think anyone can until you get like a Jorge Flores where no one could pull off the Mizakuli. What's his last name? David Mezzicelli. Mezzicelli. There you go. Um, no one can pull off that work and everyone tries to do that work, but Jorge Flores has pulled it off, like as we've seen recently in Daredevil and Batman and Rorschach. But until we get someone that can do it like that, no one's going to be able to pull off the Kirby stuff. The, the closest one who's been able to pull off Jack Kirby is Ed McGuinness, I think. Um, and even he, I think is, I think he's pretty underrated. I think he draws like the best, one of the best Hulks. Yeah. He created Red Hulk and everything. Oh, okay. All right. I know what you're talking about then. Yeah. 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 I think you he's, know, he's the closest thing you're going to get to Jack Kirby these days. You know, Romita, I feel like really, uh, and this Daredevil John Romita Jr. Yeah. Well, no, 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 I'm not, don't let me finish. <laughs> let me finish talking real fast. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, the documentary, the Daredevil documentary that Brandon and I, uh, had watched recently, uh, he even says, oh, people say I have a real Kirby uh, essence to my work. And um, he kind of just says how much of a slacker he is as an artist to a certain extent. But like he tries to do the Kirby because he gets the blockiness down. But that's all he does. He gets like the blocky characters. And that's like a failed attempt at a Kirby thing because the blockiness only goes so far. And like the wavy lines and the, the thick mm. inks. And I feel like Romita's trying, Romita Jr. is trying to do that, but it just doesn't work out. Can, can I say this for, for Kirby too as an artist? I I have a real problem um, drawing hands. And this is where people have said that I they could see a little bit of the, the Kirby-ness in my in my in my art because uh you know i'm nowhere near that level but he i have a real problem drawing hands so whenever i do have a problem drawing hands i look up jack kirby because he draws them in a way where i'm just like i can get that i can, you can process it you can understand yeah, it right because yeah. he draws them in a way i'm just like i could just if i break it down into shapes enough I can get what he's doing on there. So my hands tend to come out very Kirby-esque the way they look on my characters because he's really the only one that I look at. Like, I can't look at Jim Lee. And I can't look at, you know, George Perez or John Byrne or any of them and be like, oh, that's how you draw hands. Like, I have to look at Kirby and the way he put the body together and everything. Mm-hmm. And as yeah. that and perspective, too. Like, stretching the body and twisting it into different poses, you know, that's another thing he was really great at. I think it's more just comes down to his rendering of the whole thing where I'm just like, that's, you know, he, you'd never get away with that. I could see that. I can understand that for sure. Um, it's weird. Uh, I just, I don't know a Kirby thing that I really don't like, you know what I mean? And that's another right. thing when it comes to like original creations, I can't think of a Kirby creation. That's just like, you know, that's kind of just dumb because you look at, even when it comes to his writing, you know, and how he was writing, it was like, yeah, it's not the greatest, but look at this dude was like in World War II and that's like how far back he goes and that's where his writing and everything comes from. And with a lot of that, it's like, you know, these are the first real creations. These are the first yeah. Black Panther, Fantastic Four. They, they might seem cheesy to a certain extent now, but it's like none of this existed or nothing like this existed. I've heard um, that his eternal stuff is a little meh compared to his other stuff, but that's, I want to, re- I'm, I plan on reading that before the movie comes out. His eternal same. run. I just read yeah. the Neil Gaiman stuff and how like he tries to not mimic Kirby, but kind of put his own twist to it. Yeah. But even the Eternals was post- uh, his DC stuff po- post fourth world and going into Marvel back back to Marvel mm-hmm. and he he had just finished doing two thousand and one and then he did Eternals where he kind of had free reign and it just it just kind of ended and f- fithered out from there and he just did what I think Captain Victory after that and mm-hmm. so some... let me look it up let me see um I had his oh no I stopped sharing no <laughs> but it's just he's just one of those people like we're we don't 
we're still writing his characters and we're, we're still writing his stories oh, yeah. over There's and so over much more over. to tell with his characters easily. Yes. Yeah. He made characters so well that it's, you know, 80 years later, we're still writing about Captain America. You know, we're still writing about Black Panther. He's still the biggest, like all these things. And it's like, who else has pumped out that much original material? And have we seen it carry on to today? It's... His character, Mr. Miracle, is like, it, like Tom King just and Mitch Gerard just did like you know that run and it's one considered one of the best runs of the year. Yeah, exactly. Ever oh, almost man. now, it's really ranked up there. It's phenomenal. It's still on list, and it, he is just an, an inspiring force. You know. Um, yeah. So my vote underrated. I'm gonna say underrated as a creator, a little overrated as an artist. I think I still stand by. Uh, could be argued. I'm not saying I would necessarily, but could be argued maybe a little overrated in certain aspects of the com- comic book community. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll probably lean towards the underrated as to, in terms of creator and just an artist and writer in general because the amount of stuff that the DCU and MCU barely exposes to the general audience that Jack Kirby created, I mean... A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. 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 So uh, I would say he didn't make Batman so overrated for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm oh, kidding. Man. Man's, Can you man's a, definitely underrated, actually, though. I feel like he's been underrated since like the earlier Marvel movies, honestly. Yeah. Did he uh, Did he ever draw Batman? He drew oh Kiss. Not if he did. Dude, he drew uh, 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 like, like a the concept same thing. art. For uh, the Kiss movie, uh, Phantom yeah, like at the, the same Park thing. or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did, oh, dude. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, someone uh, doing like a what if he did, trying to do it in his art style. Um, but uh, I was going to say real quick. So apparently Kirby drew over 20,000 comic book pages. Um, and he did over 1,400 covers alone. Um. It's a lot. That's just what's known too. I, okay, I got my numbers mixed up. I said over a hundred thousand pages, but um, I think that's just what's like documented. You know, who knows what else he did? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, uh, I again, I, I'm in the middle, but I'd lean towards a little underrated. Yeah, okay. I think that universally meets because Danny was like half and half. So I think, I think overall, then I'd say we were. I was going to try to pull it out real fast, but I just got a new comic (laughs) recently. Um, And Kirby and Todd McFarlane worked on it together. Wow. And I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. So Um, did did we go through our entire list? It's our whole list. So Kevin Smith, overrated. Jim Lee, overrated. Jeff Loeb, underrated. Kind of a tie, though. And Jack Kirby, underrated. Um, so it's two for it's a tie. We got two over and two under. Yeah. Uh, Whew. Well, thanks for uh hanging after this long Snyder week. And I think mm. we're all a bit tired and a bit exhausted, a little bit definitely. burnt out. And this was definitely a pleasant conversation to get our minds off of that and kind of unwind into the other parts of the comic book universe. Yeah. Um Danny, tell us where we can find your stuff. You could find me at www.dannybenson.com that has links to all my social media. You can also check uh, out www.thirdplanet.news. Uh, it's a news website that I run with Brandon and my other friend Ryan. Uh, it has links to our YouTube, Instagram, and all that on there. You could also check out the Third Planet podcast. Uh, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. And we have a lot of cool content coming out. And uh, yeah, check us out there. And Comron, where can we find your amazing stuff, such as Sutro Sidewatch? So you can find that and more at Sutro Side Talk, which is on various podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and much more. Uh, you can also uh, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Sutro Side Talk. We have four different shows all in there, and each one is much different than the other. So definitely check that out. And you can find me on Twitter at GoGoComzilla. And Brandon, you're with me. 
I know. I'm stuck with you at the Paul City <laughs> Comics Podcast, where you can find on every major podcast platform. That includes Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Pandora. Oh, are we on Pandora? Are you reading so. the whole list? I think so. <laughs> no, that was all from memory. Uh, <laughs> You can do. Uh, you can also check us out on YouTube. We're introducing new videos to have more video, uh, visual approach to our, I guess, work. And uh, make sure to follow on Instagram and Twitter to see any updates on anything going on in our lives and our collection. Yeah, that's right. Well, boys, thanks for hanging. Thanks for having me. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good one. <laughs>